Hello everyone, and welcome back to Killer Shrew Fans Killer Toy Reviews. By now I'm sure you've figured out that today we will be taking a look at this, the PNSO Spinosaurus named Essien. Essien is another in PNSO's wave of wallet-destroying dinosaurs that they released in the early months of 2019, and one that I just recently acquired. If you've been following my channel, then you know I did post a picture of the Papospinosaurus on Essien's base a couple weeks ago when I first got it, but instead of doing a review and unboxing right out of the gate, I decided I wanted to sit on this one for a bit and really take the time to take it in so that way I wasn't trapped in a honeymoon stage, thus declaring this one of the greatest models in my collection right out of the gate. Now, I wanted to kind of just sit back, really really consider my feelings on this model before doing a review because this is an important review with 2019 being the so-called year of the spinosaurus there were two incredible models of the species released in that year many others that weren't so great but a lot of spinos came out in 2019 this being one of them the other contender for the throne in my opinion was the Papo Spinosaurus, and I wanted to really think about which one of them I preferred after having this one for a few weeks on my shelf. So today we're going to decide once and for all, from my point of view, which Spinosaurus of 2019 was superior. So let's go ahead and get after it. Before we get to the figure itself, I do want to mention the box that it comes in. I don't remember which YouTuber said this, but she compared these boxes from PNSO to the boxes of Apple products. They're the Apple products of the dinosaur toy community. And that is just very accurate. I love the stark white background compared to the dinosaur on the front there because it really just makes it pop and look so sleek. So much so that I try to incorporate these boxes into my display wherever possible because they are just as much of a piece as the dinosaur itself. They are gorgeous. Unfortunately, with this box, once I bring in Essien, like out of the box and set him down next to the stock image, the glamour shot here on the cover, this is where I lose some of my excitement for the figure. Now, as expected, there is a difference between the promo images and the final product, but I don't think I have ever seen such a drastic disparity between final product and glamour shot with a PNSO model. You're missing this glorious sort of teal coloration that covers the entire dorsal region and the appendages on the actual model. And I think that would have been so cool to have. So right out of the gate, I had issues with Essien. It felt weaker. But before we get to Essien himself, I do want to talk about this base because this base is yet another impressive stand from PNSO. I'm a big fan of how they captured the realism of a beach area, especially with the indentations of the feet there, how they painted them a darker brown color where the moisture would have been captured beneath the top layer of the sand. You've also got these lovely sculpted ridges that would have come as a result of the rivulets of water streaming down off this sawfish creature that looks like it was just snatched from the surf and thrown down, causing all of the water to run and upset the sandy regions. The texturing, fantastic, the paint scheme does a great job of conveying a sandy environment. As a whole, this base is just as good as Essien himself. This sawfish creature here, very well sculpted, and the wounds look absolutely fantastic. I like that they put a bit of gloss in there to give it a bloody wet sheen. Although I do wish that they applied the same amount of sheen to the creature itself, perhaps to make it look like it really is wet and sleek with water. It's just a little extra detail I would have liked to see. It's not a make it or break it thing for me. Now I'm going to nip this in the bud right away. Essien does not stand without his base. He leans a little too far onto his left arm and that just causes his center of gravity to push him over. So he does need his base just like Lucas the Giganotosaurus, but that's okay because the base is fantastic. Taking a closer look at Essien himself, once again, PNSO does not disappoint in terms of the detail. You can see scales of varying shapes and sizes adorning the entire surface area of the face. That premaxilla notch of the Spinosaurus has been lovingly addressed here on this model, and the teeth have all been individually sculpted, and like many of their carnivorous dinosaurs, he does have an articulated jaw, which opens nice and easy to reveal a rough and shiny looking tongue and moist cheek. 
The Spinosaurus nasal crest has been addressed as well, and the eyes are done in a lovely yellow and orange coloration that have a good amount of life to them. Taking a look at the opposite side, you can see once again, the scaling detail here is just awesome. Not a speck of space has been left unattended to, and you can also see you have got some wrinkles forming just past the base of the skull and down in the throat region that would come as a result of Essien opening his mouth. And it's always nice to see uh, companies paying attention to how the skin would fold and move under pressure from different body parts or in different positions. You can also see on the neck there that you have got a row of sort of crocodilian scoots that run down the length of the body as well as dorsal spikes that cover the entire dorsal region from back of the skull to the tip of the tail. Going down the body you can see some lovely wrinkles, folds of skin, all of which have been saddled with beautiful scaling details of various shapes and sizes and styles. The midsection you can see a good indication of the ribs as well as some lovely wrinkles around the swell of the gut there and bunching up just around the thigh. And as you can see the scaling detail continues all the way from the back of the head down to the tip of the tail which features an interesting sort of uh, paddle shape to it. I don't believe I've ever seen this sort of uh, this sort of style on a Spinosaurus toy and I think it looks really really cool. It's not as out there as the Papo Spinosaurus but it is something interesting that's not like a straight up crocodile tail and I applaud PNSO for going down that route. As you can see going back up the opposite side the detail is just as incredible here with the wrinkles, folds of skin, ribs, scales of varying shapes and sizes, all sorts of glorious texture that continues all the way back up to that glorious Essien head. Taking a look at the sail of this Spinosaurus, the namesake of this creature, I think this thing looks pretty cool. I really love the sort of scale details that are sort of lining the vertebra, the extended vertebra of the spine. I think those scales look really, really cool. I can't put my finger on exactly why, but they're different enough to separate them from the rest of the style of Essien, and they don't look like weird in any way either. So I think they struck a good balance of doing something different with this sail. My biggest issue with this area, we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves, but is it's definitely with the paint. There's like very little gradation between that green olive tone into that sort of rustic orange tone onto the sail. It, it's just, it's there and then it's not. And it's a very garishly applied air, splash of color that if it had been done properly would have looked incredible but unfortunately in this case looks a bit lackluster the paint does not augment the detail on that sail as well as it could as far as the legs and other appendages go they look incredibly powerful and robust you've got a lovely calf muscle flexing and bulging lovely wrinkles down around the kneecap the thigh looks incredibly powerful again lined with a little bit uh, more wrinkles they've also ooh, sorry about that flare there uh, they've also sculpted in webbing between the toes which I think is fantastic you've got lovely plate scaling going up the backs of the toes and there you can see a lovely kneecap powerful looking thigh once again Taking a look at the hands of Essien, as you can see, they have kind of got that extreme PNSO flexing going on. It's a bit weird, but I do like the ridge scaling on the back of the hands, and the musculature here is quite nice. The claws themselves are nicely weathered and look pretty nice, if not a little too similar to the color on the rest of the body, which is unfortunate because that doesn't separate them as well. You've got some lovely pectoral muscles going on in the chest region. Now, one thing people have noticed about Essien here is that he is a bit shrink-wrapped. I didn't want to say that. I thought he looked a little lithe, perhaps in the rib region. But when you turn him over, yes, he looks incredibly skinny. Very, very thin from a dorsal perspective. It's, it's a bit bizarre how not wide this guy is. I don't know if it's necessarily shrink-wrapped per se. There might be a little bit, like I said, in the ribs and on the face, but nothing like abhorrent. But when you look at him from the top, yes, he does look remarkably, remarkably narrow-framed, which is just 
weird to me. I don't, I don't know why he looks so like thin from the top, but it looks like he has bulk from the other angle. Sure, he looks a bit skinny. I don't know if shrink wrap's the right word. Maybe, maybe he just needs to catch a few more fish to make him a bit bulked up. But yeah, that dorsal region's really throwing me. As far as the pose goes, it's again a very naturalistic approach. You can see he is striding forward across this beachy terrain, and he's kind of positioned in front of that sawfish creature, kind of looking off to the right. So I kind of see it as perhaps he is challenging a rival to his meal, like he sees another spino striding towards him. So he's put himself in front of the fish and is turning towards the adversary kind of squaring up like don't come near my snack which i think is you know a nice little pose to give this guy it feels natural it's not too extreme and i can uh, make sense of why they went that route as far as the paint scheme goes this is where essien fails i think the paint is well applied and everything there's some lovely gradation particularly in the gut region but it's just so drab and um, derivative of the Lucas paint scheme. It's a bit too similar to Lucas and it's not as well applied. It augments the detail really well with the dry brushing, but it's missing so many of those beautiful colors that were present on the box and because of that, I'm a bit disappointed. As far as the size of Essien goes, if we take a measurement from the tip of tail to the tip of the snout, he's coming in at just past 19 inches long, or maybe just around 19 inches. Hold on, let me get a better look at him here. So, uh, yeah, right around 19 inches. It's hard to measure him because that tail is swinging back, which is about 48 centimeters from the tip of the tail to the tip of the snout, and then from the base all the way to the highest point, which is the sail in this case the tops of the highest spike you're looking at just under seven and a half inches off the ground which is about 19 or so centimeters from the base of my review space all the way to the top of essien the spinosaurus for size comparison we're going to go ahead and bring in some recently reviewed pnso figures first we have got lucas the giganotosaurus and as you can see i tried to uh, line them up as close to the tip of the tail as possible and Essien is a right bit longer than Lucas the Giganotosaurus but this also just kind of highlights that earlier point I had about the disparity in the paint application and also the similarity in the overall palette you can see they're both very green yellow orange but I do think Lucas has a much better application in terms of his color scheme I don't know what it is I don't know what the difference is in how they applied it but it is noticeably different and I think S or Lucas pops a bit better. Next up, we have got the Yang Chuanosaurus and Chung Kingosaurus diorama by PNSO and as you can see it is absolutely dwarfed by Essien, but again, I do think the paint scheme is better applied on Dayong the Yang Chuanosaurus than on Essien the Spinosaurus. And now we're going to get into some Spinosaurids. First up, the most common, I feel, the Papospinosaurus. And as you can see, Essien dwarfs this Jurassic Park 3 inspired model from Papo. But again, I think the paint schemes augment the detail just as well in both cases, which is saying something because the Papo Spino is what, like 30 bucks versus Essien's 75? And next we have got the Papo Baryonyx, another glorious Spinosaurid figure. Well, maybe not glorious, but a decent Spinosaurid figure. And yes, again, dwarfed by Essien the Spinosaurus. And yeah, Essien does look a right bit better than the Papo Baryonyx, as he well should, given the price disparity between these two models. And finally, for the comparison that I have to do, otherwise this video would be really, really lame, it is the Papo 2019 Limited Edition Spinosaurus compared to PNSO Essien the Spinosaurus. And as you can see, uh, the Essien variant does have the edge in terms of the overall size, but we're going to go a bit more in depth with this comparison. This is like the big duke out of the year, in my opinion. Which of these two was better? The Rebore Grab and Go Spinosaurus has not hit the market yet, so that one is not on the table for us to compare, so it's down to these two 
behemoths, and it is honestly a tough call for me. I feel as though the detail is a lot better realized on the PNSO offering. It pops so much better than on that of the Papo iteration. I think Papo's details tend to get glossed over in their painting process. So I do think Essien has both the size advantage and the overall detail advantage. The thing that keeps me going back to the Papospinosaurus, however, would be the overall visual appeal. There is a distinct style to the Papospinosaurus that Essien is just missing. The paint scheme is so much more intricate. There's patterns, there's variations in colors, and the Papospinosaurus also has some good bulk that I feel like Essien is missing. So really, between these two, it's a tough choice. I think the detail and accuracy sings out better with PNSO, but the overall visual appeal, Papo takes it with that one. The price points are also pretty similar. I mean, the Papo one's like 16 or so dollars cheaper, uh, so maybe that can account for the size disparity, but yeah, I don't know. I think I'm still drawn to Papo. So until the Rebore Grab and Go line comes out, I'd say Papo is my favorite Spinosaurus, and yes, he does work well with Essien's base, as you can see. I know I posted a picture of this a while back, but I just think it's fun, and I wanted to do it again here in this video. I think this looks great, so you know, if you want to just get Essien, keep the base for the Papo one, there you go. Well, everyone, there you have it. That is going to do it for our look at PNSO's Essien, the Spinosaurus. Overall, this is another very good model from PNSO, but I hate to say it is probably my least favorite that I have reviewed so far. The detail is once again fantastic, but just some bizarre choices, especially in terms of the paint application, are definitely crippling the overall appeal of this model. Because of that, I don't think it was the best Spinosaurus to come out of 2019, although it did give the Papo Limited Edition Spino a run for its money. That was a very tight race between these two and a very tough call on my part, and you're free to disagree with me. And of course, we're still waiting on the Rebore Grab and Go line, which is the sort of dark, could be the dark horse in this situation that could come out and be like the best Spino that everyone agrees on. But until then, I'm still going to award it to Papo and say that Essien here is unfortunately a discount dino, meaning I do think it's good, I think it's worth it, but only if you can get it for less than that $75 asking price. It's a bit much to pay in my opinion. But as always, I want to know what you guys think. Do you prefer Essien or do you prefer the Papo Spinosaurus? What is your favorite Pap or what is your favorite Spinosaurus in toy slash model form? Leave all your comments down below. And as always, thank you guys so much for tuning in today. And that's gonna do it for our review. I hope to see you again in the next one. Bye bye.